What was the theological jump that led him to this anti-war pacifist position as opposed to being one who said, now we have to rebuild Europe, um, freedom, democracy, uh, the war against the uh, Soviet Union, the Iron Curtain. Theologically, what was that progression? Yeah, that's a little hard to explain, but it does, it does, um, it does happen during this period from basically 1948 until about 1954. Um, he's having more and more contact during this period. He becomes sort of the foreign minister of the Protestant church, which involves all this travel I was talking about. So he's coming into contact with all sorts of people. Um, and one group that he comes into contact with is um, the Fellowship of Reconciliation, which is a pacifist organization. One of the leaders is this well-known guy, A.J. Musty. And Niemöller comes into more and more contact with these types of, of individuals, in part because he's more and more associated with the progressive wing of Protestantism in Germany. Um, his, his movement toward pacifism is also influenced by the Korean War. The Korean War breaks out in 1950 um, when the North Koreans invade the South. This is um, of a concern to Germans because Germany has an East an eastern part of Germany that's communist and a western part of Germany that's liberal democratic. So there's a fear that perhaps the East German communists would invade western Germany, just like the North Vietnamese, com North Koreans communists invaded South Korea. And so there's a number of different sort of factors that come into Niemöller um, transitioning from somebody who had embraced war, um, even as a Christian, to someone who actively uh, protested war, nuclear weapons, and um, any sort of um, remilitarization re of Germany after 1945. You know, once the Cold War begins, um, many of the Western powers, including the United States, um, believed that it was time for Germany to, Western Germany, to remilitarize, since they were right on the border with Eastern Germany and, and the Iron Curtain. And Niemöller was terrified that, you know, East Germans and West Germans would, would go to war against one another um, and that they would be sort of the center of any sort of nuclear Armageddon. And so this also influenced his movement towards pacifism. Um, one thing that was kind of crucial in all of this was that um, the, the so-called father of nuclear chemistry is this German uh, scientist called Otto Hahn. And Otto Hahn and Niemöller met in 1954. And Otto Hahn explained that the atomic bombs dropped in 1945 on Japan were nothing compared to the hydrogen bombs that had been um, developed since then. And he said in 1954 to Niemöller that um, nuclear warfare today would, would mean the annihilation of the planet. And so Niemöller says that um, when he heard this, he read through the entire New Testament looking for any evidence that Jesus um, would have in any way whatsoever supported a war, even a just war. And he came to the conclusion that there was no evidence in the New Testament to defend warfare, especially nuclear warfare. And so he, from that point on, he announced his pacifism in 1954 and spent much of the rest of his life advocating for a pacifist position. He was a, a very strong critic after first supporting it, uh, the Korean War, and a very strong critic of the war in Vietnam and of the nuclear arms race.